sexual thing. I go. A long time ago, in a galaxy far, far away, a movie was created that evolved into a trilogy and then a franchise and has been explored many times over for the better course of about four decades. And today, we can either bring you in warm or we can bring you in cold. I mean, I'm pretty cold. It's cold in this room. Well, it well we're in Wisconsin, and it just recently snowed and stormed yeah, over the weekend. Yeah, and so we are in the attic. We we are we are in a at- attic that I'm cur- we're currently using for the studio. So I apologize yeah. for that, yeah. but hopefully it'll warm up soon. Uh huh. Well, you, <laughs> I mean, I have a nice blanket today, so that's good. okay. Okay, as long as long as you're okay, I'm fine because I normally mm-hmm. like layer myself anyway. Yeah. But anyway, regardless of that, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the General Geekery Podcast, the podcast where we talk about all of the geek things, the things we like to geek over, and everything in between, whether we have a specific topic going on or if we just want to muse some general musings. This, uh, I'm Donald Kaczynski, as always, and with me again, the awesome Hannah Kubiak. Hello. And, uh... We came up with, I think we came up with this topic pretty quickly because it was both mm-hmm. on our minds, like, mm-hmm. recently. So, the just based on that intro and uh, the quote, y'all, mm-hmm. y'all can probably guess what we're talking about. We're going to be talking about um, the new the new Star Wars, um, uh, technically TV series? It's a, ep- yeah, ep- episo- it's a miniseries. Ep- yeah, ep- miniseries, episodic series, whichever you like to call it, the, from uh, the new streaming service of Disney+. Plus. The Mandalorian, created mm. by John Favreau, the man who um, created the uh, Iron Man movies and is one of the main heads responsible for starting the entire MCU. Dude, so. man, he- I gotta say, um, I had I I hadn't seen this show until recently, and I had weeks and weeks of people. Well, because I didn't have access to Disney Plus, so I had weeks and weeks of Me neither. people of of people talking about how awesome it was and people sharing memes so many baby yoda memes and oh i was my like god. and i was like oh my gosh like cuz i'm kind of one of those um i'm kind of one of those people who i'm like oh man you know if it's a big deal and everybody is into it i'm not really interested but there was like people just kept bugging me they're like hey you got to watch the mandalorian and i was like yeah okay i will and i started watching it and and i cuz i was like well i'll just do my um I'll do my nerd obligation here and uh, watch the Star Wars thing, and it, it I, sucked it you in. It blew me away. I loved it so much. It's probably it was the last thing I watched in 2019, and it was my favorite thing I think that I have seen in that year. Like it, so many things, so many things, and so many great, great nerdy things came out of 2019. Mm-hmm. But the, mm-hmm. for the Mandalorian to be one of the top, like mm-hmm. that says a lot. This is yeah. also coming from the same year that gave us. Avengers Endgame and so many other great things. Right, yeah. The Rise of Skywalker also. <laughs> did did you see Rise of Skywalker? I did twice. Okay, we'll we'll, we'll t- talk about we'll it. Talk about the, we'll, no, talk, no, no, no. we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that. So much to say about that too. Yeah, that's fair. We'll talk about we'll talk we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that another time. Um uh right now we're focusing on Unlimited the man the ma- Unlimited <laughs> Oh my! That's probably one of my greatest, greatest, most favorite things to ever come out of the prequel trilogy. Oh yeah. But um, the the Mandalorian, you can tell this was a passion project from like the first scene, like the first mm-hmm. five minutes. Mm-hmm. Oh my god! There's so much to talk about this. It's like a it's like a western in space. It is. It is a it is a general g- genuine space western. Yeah, yeah. It's it kind of reminded me of Firefly a little bit. Like the guy yeah. flying around doing all these all these random jobs, he's kind of on the run from people who and and um like you know the whole thing where the inciting incident of the whole series is that there's <clears throat> this there's somebody who's like wanted or on the run that right. they, they rescue and take on sort of um I guess against their better judgment usually. Right. They're like, well, I want to stay, like, you know, steer clear of trouble and, <clears throat> you know, turn these people in. But then there's that moment of compassion and the kind of like the save the cat moment. I don't remember what the, I don't right. remember who the, whether who the author of this is, but there's a book about writing or storytelling where it's like, well, if you want people to like your character, they have to do something, they have to do something kind of heroic at the beginning, like within the first couple of minutes or pages you know like right like save the cat 
<laughs> that's in a tree. That's like a that's like an example of something. Yeah, it, like it like it has to just leave it has to leave a mark and leave a lasting impression. And mm-hmm. they really did that with that first episode. Like the moment they did like, was that the episode? Was that whole thing? Um, the end of the first episode was he found the baby. Yeah, well, Yoda. that yeah, the end of the first episode was where they found the baby. But like the opening scene when they're like on that Arctic world when they're mm-hmm. in the, in the bar and like the guy's mm-hmm. getting heckled and the mm-hmm. he he gets approached and everything like that and then the entire fight starts. The one guy runs away. Mm-hmm. The door opens. He manages to catch catch him on the leg like when he's halfway mm-hmm. out. The, he shoots the door. The door closes and we don't see it, but we know what happens. I'm mm-hmm. just like, yep. I'm like, ten out of ten. Yep. You sold me just with this scene I mean, alone. Yep. Yep. When you uh, when you cut someone in half, you have uh, <laughs> you have met expectations. <laughs> no. Like like for some reason, and I don't know why. Like every single like western and like space western was going mm-hmm. through my through my mind. Every Clint Eastwood movie. Well, jo- yeah, it's because like you go the first scene is he goes up to this sort of like saloon thing and the doors open and everybody like huh yep. Like, Wow, wow, wow. Oh, man. Like, every Clint Eastwood film, every John Wayne Mm -hmm. film, like, this, like, all the space stuff and everything like that reminded me of, like, the show Cowboy Bebop. Mm -hmm. Which is, like, kind of, which is kind of insane to think about because it takes on, like, more of, like, its own life, like, half, like, halfway through the first episode, thank Mm God. And, oh my, there is so much to talk about. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, timeline-wise... This takes place in between Episode 6, Return of the Jedi, and Episode 7, mm-hmm. um, uh, The Force Awakens. Yeah, so the Empire has fallen. Yep, and, and we actually get to see, like, the immediate after effects and all that, mm-hmm. and wow, yeah. they made such a good job with, like, just the, can I say the cinematography and just, like, the shots they have chosen in the set design. Mm-hmm. Wow, they were on point. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. Oh. Okay. And they... And they and like they've incorporated like some familiar stuff with Star Wars, but taken mm-hmm. it in a new direction that mm-hmm. has not been seen before. Before, at least in the live action sense, mm-hmm. like they've done some some crazy stuff with like the animated series, such as Rebels and Clone Wars, and mm-hmm. again Clone Wars. But yeah, <clears throat> because there's two different Clone Wars series. But oh, okay, I'll I'll, I'll get into that another time. <laughs> um, but th- it's just something that like you've always wanted. A lot of people have always wanted, like, a spinoff show about, like, the bounty hunters. Because mm-hmm. the bounty hunters are always, like, one of the coolest things about Star Wars. I'm sorry, I'm just uh, yeah. closing off a uh, pop-up that just popped up on the computer. We're, yeah. we're recording, darn it. We don't We don't need We don't need an up, update. Don't update while we're in the middle of recording. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Sorry about that, folks. But, <laughs> <laughs> I, um... But yeah, like, when you look back at, like, the original trilogy, like, a lot of people, like, said, like, one of the favorite characters that they always liked watching mm-hmm. was Boba Fett. Mm-hmm. Like, the bounty, like, the, like, one of the main bounty hunters. Like, he didn't, he didn't say much. Oh, no, yeah. But he was just standing there, like, looking like a complete badass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he wore, man, and he was, man, technically Mandalorian, yeah, so. Yeah, yeah. I, um, can I just say, I love that sort of Mandalorian culture thing, like, I think that's probably one of my favorite, um, my, what's one of my favorite fantasy culture building in a story, um, since, um, since the desert people in Dune. Like, oh, yeah. The desert people in Dune, it's, it's just, they're so different from what we would think. Like, spitting at somebody is a sign of respect because they value, they value water so much because they live in this desert. Right. Um, so oh, I just I love those kind of things like like creating new cultures and learning about mm-hmm. different ways that people could live and just that idea of always wearing a helmet and never showing your face to anybody like I loved that it was so cool. Well, and they're that... like all their all their rituals and their like weapons are part of their religion and all that. Yep. Well, it... <sighs> The Mandalorian like culture has been present in Star Wars through a lot of stuff. Even though you don't really see it in mm-hmm. like the original trilogy outside mm-hmm. of like just Boba Fett having the armor, even though they didn't develop the Mandalorians as like a culture mm-hmm. yet. Like in the extended universe of Star Wars, all the spin-off novels, the video games, they constantly reference Mandalore. Uh-huh. Which is amazing. Oh my god. 
sorry again. Pop pop-ups are killing me. Pop-ups, why why are you coming up? Mm-hmm. So they reference Mandalore a lot. Yeah, and um actually in um in Clone Wars, they actually do um bring in Mandalore as its own like story arc. Ooh, okay. Because um man like the man the Mandalorian like um uh cult. Mm-hmm. Not, no, not cult, that's wrong. Like the religion and everything like that, like mm-hmm. everything that they stand for, has been present ever since um, the time a thousand years before um, mm-hmm. the Re- the Republic fell and became the Empire. Mm-hmm. Like that's how like the old Republic um, uh, series comes into that respect. Mm-hmm. And like even though it's constantly like changed over time with like different traditions and everything like that, because mm-hmm. I remember like the constantly leaving the helmet on was not always a part of it, but I think it was like that ever since the Empire took power. Oh, okay. I could be wrong about that, though. Yeah. Because I'm not as brushed up on uh, Star Wars as um, some of my uh, other friends that are huge yeah. into that. You're more brushed up than I am, to be honest. Um... It, 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 it's, it's, it's okay. <laughs> because, because as long as you under, as long as we understand that, like, Mandalorians are probably some of the biggest badasses in the entirety of Star Wars, like... Uh-huh. Yeah. And, um... It's it was so good like watching through this. Um, they made so many references to previous some um, Star Wars installments, both mm-hmm. in television as well as in uh, um, the movies. The first episode had a reference to the Star Wars holiday special. I was laughing my ass off. <laughs> really, I missed it. What was it? So um, so when the Mandalorian has um uh, the guy that he just captured for the bounty and like the guy's looking through the ship and everything like that, oh, trying right. to weigh out, yeah. he mentions something called Life Day. Oh, okay. So in the Star Wars holiday special in like the seventies, I don't know if you've ever seen this. No, I haven't. Um, basically they, basically Life Day is like uh, the Star Wars version of Christmas. So they did a, it was a, te- it was a television special that only aired once. In fact, George Lucas has tr- been trying to go out of his way to destroy every single copy of this um special like according to rumors <laughs> it was that bad hmm. Be- and and like they have to ce- they have to celebrate a uh, life day because they go to the um uh, Chewie's home planet of uh, Kashyyyk and it's mm-hmm. just wookies all day wookies all day with like random like cameos from like celebrities of the time uh-huh. and it was it's a it's a tough sit through <laughs> it's a tough sit through like uh-huh. if you had a com- like if you had a com- compare like the star wars holiday special to anything else like i would like the if you if you had an academy award lineup of the star wars holiday special yeah troll 2 yeah and the room yeah the the room would win the oscar for best picture wow where would plan nine from outer space fall in that i will give it a runner up on that one yeah. Personally, I would really? give that Really? You think Plan 9 from Outer Space is better than this Star Wars holiday special? I I, I think I would say so. I Le- gotta see this holiday special. This sounds like a, a spectacularly... Fi- there's there's probably <laughs> video, there's videos on YouTube. You gotta, like, fi- like, find it. Like, Oh my gosh. It's, it's, it's something that can only be experienced. Okay. Like, there's only so much that I can personally tell that yeah. is just like, what is happening? <laughs> you must see it to believe it. But, but, but yeah... <laughs> Like if there was any like if there was any Star Wars spinoff, whether it be movie or television series, that is a love letter and a nod to like the original trilogy. Mm-hmm. I always thought it was it was more Rogue One. Uh huh. Yeah. But after comparing Rogue One to Mandalorian, I it has to be Mandalorian. Mm-hmm. Yeah. From from the set pieces to um the the design and oh the puppet work in this show, I mm-hmm. am. One of my biggest issues with, like, a lot of stuff in, like, recent Star Wars movies is that mm-hmm. a lot of characters that don't do much that could easily be puppeted. Yeah. They just CG most of it, and uh-huh. it just looks, it just looks ugly. Yeah. So I'm so glad they, like, took the time and effort to, like, make everything look, feel real with, like, mm-hmm. the use of puppetry and everything like that. Yeah, it's, like the old days, yeah. Oh my god, it was, I'm like, this this is what I have been missing. <laughs> yeah. This is what we have been missing. Thank you, John Favreau. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Gosh. Let me see. There were a couple of things that I wanted to talk about having to do with, um, having to do with the Mandalorian and the, um, like the, the, um, let's see. The, oh, yeah. Well, the whole, the, 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 the thing with the helmet. Uh-huh. 
really fascinated me because as as an actor, I know how hard it is sometimes to act without the use of your face, basically. And this guy, um, what's his name, Pedro Pascal? Yeah, the guy who's uh, playing the Mandalorian. Yes, yes, yeah, he like just it was all like it was all body language and like voice inflection. Mm-hmm. And I swear, like. I've I've seen his work before in uh, Game of Thrones, so I already knew like he, he his body language is like very direct, and he knows how to co- how to command it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, the the you'd think that that would limit you, but it doesn't. Like it doesn't. It it didn't seem to limit him at all. Like I could still tell. Kind of there was one scene where I think he was he was dis- it was like him. He was about, he had just dropped off the um, the bounty the baby right um, at the Empire guy's place and he went back to his his uh, w- ship and he was <sighs> just sitting there and I swear he wasn't moving barely at all but I could still kind of tell what he was thinking and I was like oh wait yeah the, like the stillness yeah exactly like, the, oh, wait. The, the stillness he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna go back and save the baby right. Mm-hmm. And he didn't move at all or say anything. He was just sitting alone in his ship, wearing his helmet. You can't see his face, but then, like, yeah, he, yeah. And that's difficult to oh convey. Oh, my gosh, it was ridiculous because, you know, and also, the I, thing that you can be tempted to do is if you don't get to use your your facial expressions for acting... Is that you is over-exaggerate to, yeah, your to movements. exaggerate other things, but he didn't do that. This character was very, like, very stoic, very terse, didn't really... Like he didn't say or do anything unnecessary, basically. Exactly, just like the just like the other um, uh, Mandalorians, like mm-hmm. that you yeah. see in the show, like um, the 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 mm-hmm. um, the covert that they um, uh, show all in episode three. The armorer that's present throughout. Mm-hmm. I love her, by the way. The armorer. Oh yes. my god, she oh. is she is a queen. Gosh. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh man, I wanna I wanna speak to um, the portrayal of women in this show as well. That's one of my other things I want to talk about. <laughs> like, like they picked such a great cast for this. Like, uh, I know. Like they like they brought in like a lot of like people that are very familiar with like nerd culture and things like mm-hmm. that. Like, um, the guy. So the guy who plays um, uh, uh, Karga, the the uh, the guild leader. Yeah. Um. I don't, I don't know if um, you actually knew this, but uh, he was Apollo Creed in the Rocky series. That's who that is! Oh my gosh! That, was, yeah, that, 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 that was like, annoying. Who is this man? Like, okay, I get it. Yeah, that, okay. that, was, that was annoying me for a while, too. Like, because I'm like, I'm like, he looks like, he looks like Billy D. Williams, but I was like, yeah, but he's wait, not, I was like, wait, because there was, because I always got um, Carl Weathers and Billy D. Williams right. confused at certain points, because Carl like, Weathers. like, um, uh, like, unless you hold them, like, side by side in, like, their most famous roles, like, mm-hmm. And and their youth, especially, like they almost look identical. Right. Yeah. And, and that's probably just from me, like not mm-hmm. being like as attuned with like certain like uh, yeah facial recognitions. But I'm just yeah. I'm just like they they sound they sound very similar, mm-hmm. which automatically throws me off. But yeah. But you have to. But you I have, have no to... idea that that was a... okay. Another thing, you know how much I love Supernatural. Right. The armorer, she was in a season of Supernatural. Oh, she was. She was in season she was in season um season 11. She was uh, the darkness. Oh, cool. Yeah. That's that's really awesome. And uh-huh. like I said before, the ma- the main character that played the Mandalorian, he he's been in uh, Game of Thrones, so he mm-hmm. knows um he's acted in like epics and everything like that mm-hmm. before. Um the the guy who played the robot um IG11. Right. Yeah. Um I don't know if you've seen the the IT crowd. Yes. Mo- he's Moss. Oh, that guy. Yes. Okay. I thought you were talking about a different robot. Yeah. No. 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 Moss played the robot in that one episode named Zero. Uh, Robert. I. Uh, I. Yeah. 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 That was the one. Who, yeah, that, yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. That was the one who played Zero. Richard. No, no. I. I. Iota. Uh, yeah. 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 He was the one that played Zero. Oh wait. Zero. Oh, no. IG, wait. Okay. Ig Eleven was like one of the. Yeah. Um, Ig Eleven was the guy who played um uh, one of the weird uh aliens that befriend, befriends Thor and Ragnarok and. Uh, it was the guy who directed Thor Ragnarok. Okay, yeah, I knew he was like a director. Or yeah, something. Yeah, there's all that. Yeah. Um the the ex um uh, rebel uh, dropper that they uh, brought mm-hmm. in. Um, she's she's a former um American gladiator. Oh. She's a former American gladiator, and she was also um uh, I don't know if you've seen the first uh, Deadpool movie with Ryan Reynolds. 
the first one, no. I saw the second one though. That's okay. She she was in the first Deadpool movie with uh, mm-hmm. Ryan Reynolds, so she's so wow. Yeah. She she does a lot of her own st- like her own stuff. Like uh-huh. she is a legitimate badass. Oh my gosh, I know. I love that character so much. And then of course um, <laughs> Nick, and, and and then um uh, Nick Nick Nolte as uh, Queel <laughs> as, as the Ugnot. Mm-hmm. I have spoken. Mm-hmm. And then you got um the guy who played Gus from Breaking Bad as like uh the, right. the moth. The that mo- that yeah. blew my mind. I'm Me like too. I'm I like, like Gus okay. Frank. I was like, look, okay, basically he came out and I was like, okay, he's literally just playing Gus Fring in the Star Wars universe. And it I, works. It, it did, yeah. Because, <laughs> the like, crazy thing is it works. Yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, it's Gus. And then you got, um... I think I had an audible reaction to that. Like, he came out of his ship, and I was looking, and I said, and I, I was watching, and I just went, Gus? Yeah, I, that, that was my reaction, too! <laughs> and then, okay, this one's probably gonna like, mean only a little bit to me, but, like, the guy, the man that they had play the client mm-hmm. that they originally meet, um, mm-hmm. Werner Herzog, mm-hmm. one of the most critically acclaimed film directors ever. Okay, I'm trying to think what he's done. It's a lot. It's a lot of German-made like films. Oh, Werner. Yeah, Werner oh, Herzog. Werner Herzog. Yeah. He, yeah, he's done a lot of German stuff. He's he's got very few acting credits to his name, mm-hmm. but like I remember hearing him speak one time, like um, in like interviews or stuff like that. And, I'm, and when I saw him as the client, I'm like, why does this guy look so familiar? And then yeah. I and then I, and then after I finished the series, I looked up the cast list for everybody just so I could like get all the names right. And I saw his name. I'm like, oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> How did I not notice that before? Yeah, yeah. Oh man. But But like yeah. okay, so we've gone on like with like all the actors and everything like that. Yeah. Phenomenal cast. Yeah. Like even even like w- w- some of the weaker episodes like mm-hmm. I, I think I think the Tatooine episode is a little weak, but that that's mainly just me. Which one was that again? Um uh when they when they stop on Tatooine for repairs and um uh, the uh, bounty hunter hires the, oh, the uh, other bounty hunter. That's right. Oh Actually, another acting thing on that: the woman that they're they're hunting in the desert. Mm-hmm. That's Mulan. That's that that's the voice. Of, that's the voice of Disney's Mulan. Really? Yes. That was my favorite Disney movie as a kid. Full circle. Be a man. Oh my gosh! Oh, that's awesome. Oh man. <sighs> but 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 yeah, like even with like all of that, like I can't say there was a bad episode. Yeah. No. Like, like I can say an episode was weaker compared to some of the others Mm -hmm. but there was no bad episode it was Mm -hmm. like the right set pieces um Mm -hmm. they change locations almost constantly Mm -hmm. like they they were never in one area for too long which is awesome because like we've always the nomadic lifestyle of a body hunter body hunter body hunter yeah Yeah. (laughs) But, but like we like a big thing like a lot of people have been like wanting more in like star wars like we want like to see newer worlds and everything Mm -hmm. like that Mm -hmm. because i mean how many times have we been on tatooine in both the movies and in the shows like it's probably like the most constantly um brought to planet in star Mm -hmm. wars yeah but like we want to see other locations and everything like Mm -hmm. that and i mean I will say this about the prequel trilogy, even though it has a lot of CG and everything like that, it mm-hmm. gave us more worlds to explore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which, gracias to that. Gracias to that. You did good on that. Absolutely. But, yeah, we just want to see, we want to see, like, our, this universe expanded. Yeah, yeah. And isn't that re- mainly what we want from, like, all of our um, uh, great, like, um, mythologies and everything like mm-hmm. that? Mm-hmm. Like, we, we love seeing world expanding in... Mm-hmm. The in the Lord of the Rings, mm-hmm. always. Yep. We we love seeing like uh, the world being more expanded w- uh, in the Chronicles of Narnia when mm-hmm. uh, C.S. Lewis was continually putting in the books. Yep. Yeah. Star Wars, absolutely. Mm-hmm. I mean, of course, Game of Thrones, like that was its own that was its own thing. Yeah. Still waiting for the other books to come out, George R. R. Martin. I'm calling <laughs> you out on this. <laughs> Will he hear you, I wonder? He probably won't. He's like the one person who listens to this podcast, so probably he will. If he if he was, that that'd be that'd be phenomenal. He just keeps it to himself. Phenomenal. I hear you, reader. I hear you. Oh man. But I appreciate like the show mm-hmm. because it brings back a lot of nostalgic like feels mm-hmm. from everything Star 
Star Wars related. It calls back to all everything that came before it, mm-hmm. while also bringing something new to the universe that we love. And mm-hmm. ultimately, like that's what should happen. Mm-hmm. Yep. And and I'm sad that this is only eight episodes, but yep. I can I can deal with it. Yep. Me too. Me too. I would rather have fewer fewer that are better than uh, a bunch of stuff that just sort of peters out. You know. Amen to that. Yeah. I, um... Oh, man. That... Oh, Cara Dune. <laughs> I love her. <laughs> She's so great. And you know what I love about this this show as well? Is that usually when there's, like, a badass woman character in a show, it kind of makes much of the fact that she's a badass woman. But it really didn't in this show. It was just like, there she is. She's a badass. And nobody, like... Nobody... Like, Nobody like, brought it up as though it was, like, a problem or something weird. Nobody was like, whoa, look at this tough girl. They were just like, yep, yeah, well, of course she's coming with us because exa- she's, ex- she's, she's a tough girl, Yeah, you know? You hear that, Captain Marvel? <laughs> sorry, I have, I, sorry, I'm still not, I'm still not over that movie. No? I'm still not over that movie. That movie gives me nightmares. Really? Like, huh. like, it was fine, but, know. but you know how you were saying, like, um, uh, like you don't want it like yeah. sure she can be a badass woman and everything like that but yeah. you don't have to push it yeah you don't have to push it you don't that's have to... my one problem with captain with, with captain like... marvel is that they were pushing it too hard yeah. yeah but but yeah in the mandalorian they didn't they didn't do anything like that where it's like now listen i know that this is breaking some breaking down some barriers and we're gonna do that and she and, and like no it and, wasn't and, and, at all and, and, that and, was and, just the way that she was and, and it she, wasn't and she just shut shut them up oh yeah by just being a badass Oh, and gosh. being awesome. That's <laughs> all she needed to do. We didn't need to give her any special attention or anything no, like that. No. She was part of the crew and we loved her for it. Yep, yep. Like, oh, yeah, I love it. Because a lot of the time, I'm trying to think, I think it was a TED talk I was listening to one time. And it was about, like, it was about books and movies and TV shows and about how. It was something like, what do we want to teach our daughters through through um, stories, okay. basically. Oh, hold on, I'm just going to move the mic a little bit more okay. towards you. What do we want to teach our daughters through stories, and what do we want to teach our sons, basically. And it was, it was something to do with, we don't want to, we don't want to teach, like, our, just our sons to take care of our daughters, or to exclude our daughters, or anything like that. But we want... Our, we want our sons to, um, like, want our daughters to be on their team, basically. Mm-hmm. Like, to, to sort of work, work together, I, I, I guess. I, I haven't, I wasn't able to put that together as well, as eloquently as I was hoping I would. But, I, I kind of like a, um... Ba- ba- basic, basically, all all should be included within the same circle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and should be and should be treated on equal terms. Yeah, be treated on equal terms. Yeah, so yeah, ba- ba- basic basically, you stand together, not divided. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly, and um, yeah, I love I love that because yeah, yeah, very often it's kind of like this thing was like yeah, I want to do this thing, and they're like, but you're a girl, and I'm like, so. What? Like, like yep. is that... Any, anybody got a problem with that? Wonder Woman. Teach them a damn lesson. <laughs> yeah. And, um... Seriously, I, seriously, I would, like, cheer hella hard if you went Wonder Woman on somebody. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. Just, uh... like, just like shield and sword in hand. And... Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah. I, um... But, yeah, I loved it. Just... Ah. Uh... She was great. She was just herself, and people accepted her, and, that's... and they valued her strengths, and yeah, considered her as equal. It was great. I hope they bring her back. They will. They, I like, <laughs> like we know there's probably going to be a season two of this because yeah, this was yeah. received so well. It looked like there was going to be like another, yeah, like because it left off on a yeah, because Gus busted out of the thing and he's still around. So. I do want to talk about that. <laughs> Yeah. I do want to talk about that. So, yeah. um, I I, I, sh- I should have mentioned spoiler alert like at the beginning of the episode, but anyway, it's, Gus busts out. 
Um, at the end of the final episode of this season of the season of uh, the Mandalorian, mm-hmm. um, um, what was the, his actual name? Moff no. Moff Gideon. Moff Gideon. Okay. I I, re- I remember that because Gideon is a very unique name, so I make sure to remember the uniqueness of names. I remember I was thinking of like wool coats in closets because <laughs> I thought it was moth. Well, moth is a, well, moth is a title. Moth. 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 Is it th- is it a th or an f? f- moth. Moth. F- moth. M o double f. Moth. Moth. Okay. Moth. Like like ba- like basically moth is a like a is like a title in the mm-hmm. in the hierarchy of the republic like Grand Moff Tarkin. Oh. Yeah. Moth. Like moth. Moth Kaczynski. <laughs> <laughs> Now that doesn't sound as threatening, though. What if I did it in a, a accent, Muff Kozinski? Okay, maybe that, that that adds a little bit of threateningness to it, but yeah. Muff Kozinski! <laughs> oh, good lord! <laughs> oh man! Oh, th- thank God! Thank God! There's I not am any open accents. to voice acting, everybody. Yes, I have many voices which I can do for you. Or that, that that'd be a fun one. <laughs> Anyway, you were talking about something actually <laughs> pertinent and not just shamelessly plugging your ridiculous no, it's talents. Okay. No, it's okay. <laughs> that was so good. Um, so go ahead, partner. Tell us what a moth is. Okay, so basically, like at the at the end of it, like um, they're um, uh, Gideon is um following them on a Tie Fighter and trying to um get them. They eventually take him down and he crashes. Mm-hmm. And um, as uh. As they go their, as the heroes go their separate ways, like we see the crash site, Jawas are um, pillaging it because, of course, they are. Mm-hmm. Damn Jawas! <clears throat> and, but um, as they do it, like he cuts through mm-hmm. um, the thing. Yeah. You know, you, if you want to say something, With, like, go right. Dark saber. That that is actually like the important thing I want to talk about. Okay. Because that dark saber is through like the star wars universe like Mm -hmm. that's tied with mandalorian since clone wars whoa okay what is it so you you find this out in the show but um the oh the overall thing that Mm -hmm. um that dark saber is the only lightsaber of its kind because it's more um it's not as like uh it's it's different from other lightsabers because it's (laughs) it's much thinner almost like a katana yes it was crafted by um, the first Mandalorian to ever become a Jedi. What? And during and in the lore, during the fall of the old Republic, mm-hmm. um, the Mandal um, the Mandalorians that belonged to the house that the uh, Mandalorian Jedi w- was, mm-hmm. um, because the Council um, held on to the saber after that Jedi passed, mm-hmm. but the Mandalorians um, claimed it as their own since it belonged to their house. Right. And since then, as a for the people of their house, it's become a symbol of power to all Mandalorians. Mm-hmm. And you see that um, saber constantly through, like, Clone Wars. I think it appears in Rebels. Yeah. But I don't remember. Mm-hmm. But when I saw but when I saw that, it's very unique among this, the lightsabers because it has its own distinct sound compared to other lightsabers. Yeah. Could you, could you, what does it sound like again? Um, it's got, <laughs> it's got more of, like, a um, higher tone whining sheen compared to, like, the because your lightsabers go. Vroom, vroom, I was, I was, vroom, this is what vroom. I wanted. Yeah. And then, the, and then the um, uh, the dark saber has a higher tone, like. <laughs> yep. Kind, kind of. I kind of butchered it a little bit. I mean, I get it. But, I just wanted you to try and make lightsaber noises. Yeah, that's that's really that's, all, that's fair. That's really all I wanted. I didn't want you to do it well. But. No, it's okay. <laughs> but also the distinct color, like the distinct color of it, with it being total black and having like a white outline mm-hmm. around it, like. It's probably the most unique lightsaber mm-hmm. that's been created in the Star Wars universe, and I'm comparing this to like um, uh, Samuel L. Jack- Jackson's purple lightsaber, mm-hmm. um, the dual light, the the double bladed lightsaber that Darth uh, Maul has, mm-hmm. and of course Kylo Ren's um, uh, cross saber, which the is cross, still the cross guard saber. The cross guard saber. It confuses it... me because how do you not? How do you not like? I don't know. I feel like if you had those little cross guards that were that were lightsabery, you would end up cutting yourself with them. Like, well, maybe not. 
I, I think it's, I think it's more just like a, like a symbol of status. It also depends on like how they wield it too. So yeah, I guess so. I like, mean, that was pretty cool in the movie when he stabbed somebody with the um with with the with, with the hilt with one of the hilts. Yeah, that yeah that that was that Take was him down. It, yeah. it, so it has its practical uses. It does. It does. You might you might accidentally uh, cut yourself with it, but it's pretty cool. It's an it's just an effective so, weapon against divine enemies. Cool, dangerous. Yeah. You gotta walk. You gotta walk a fine line. But you know what? In order for it to be dangerous and make you look cool, you know what? There you go. There you go. And uh, and <laughs> but I'm but one thing I'm curious about because it was left on a cliffhanger because um mm-hmm. last I checked the uh, the dark saber was in the hands of a Mandalorian. So I want to know how Gideon got that saber. Yeah. Because I I need some backstory. Like we got a little bit of backstory, especially with the Mandalorian's like personal history and how he mm-hmm. came to be Mandalorian. <laughs> yeah. Because as I said in the show, Mandalorian isn't a race; it's a creed. Mm-hmm. Yep. He and that and that and that's why they use the term foundling and everything yep. like that. Yeah. For oh. this is the way. Yep. Oh, I love it. I want that tattooed. This is the way. I kind of want that tattooed oh, after man. all that because that was so good. Yeah, yeah. But, oh my gosh. One more thing. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so I was talking about how cool the whole culture thing with the helmet is and um, the, like, the act, the uh, the actor, um, uh, Pedro Pascal, and his ability to act without, like... Mm-hmm facial expressions or anything like that i just love the fact that you literally only saw his face for like three seconds in the entire series and they and, and, they, and they actually worked that into like the actual like accordance of the mandalorian culture yeah yeah exactly yeah no and, living thing can see me i am not a living and thing. you know i guess just because i'm one of those people who when i when i when i believe something or decide to act in a certain way like it it's very important like like idealism i guess yeah like saying what you're gonna do and sticking to it is very important to me so i just i loved that whole thing about the helmet how like you know because you know you um yeah spoilers again yep, spoilers, um, this guys. explosion happens really close to him and he get, gets like like um, like head trauma or something, and, and, he, and like, and um, somebody's like, "Okay, I gotta take this helmet off so that I can fix you." And he's like, "No,", no. he's like, "I would rather die than take off my helmet." Like, that, that just, oh, like, and somebody was going to take it off of his head, and he like put his put his blaster out, like, "Don't, don't, don't, do t- it. don't touch me." You um, see, like, and, oh, I just, oh, I loved it so much. It's, it's like, like it, it, I, it, it, it's like, it's like, it's like the unspoken rule that the captain must go down with his ship. Yeah, like, yeah. The exactly. Mandalorian must never take off their yeah. helmet in front of a living being. And it's kind of one of those things where, you know, somebody who doesn't understand it, you're like, you are crazy. Like, why would you? Like, it's no contest. You just have to take off your helmet. But it's like, no, I will not. This, <laughs> like, is, this is the way. This is the way. Yeah, exactly. And he's just kind of, like, it's it's kind of like, if I'm, like. It, it, it It's part of their, it's part of their culture. It's mm-hmm. part of their creed. Yeah. And like that, like that's like an important thing like Mm -hmm. that's constantly through this show like i mean every day in our lives like we always like encounter something like we don't fully understand like when a person does something and everything like that but Mm -hmm. for some people like it's an everyday like a ritual for them like Mm -hmm. depending on their beliefs their um yeah like their beliefs their habits things like that like yeah it's it's how they do things (laughs) yep that is their way yeah i'm just like the uh Oh, the isolation. I don't know. Like I of um of being a being a bounty hunter. And, oh man. I mean you've got your you've got your your people. Um what is it called? The co- the covert? The covert, yeah. And the covert and everything. But for the most part, he's basically alone all the time. Just like like um literally isolated from everybody by this this uh this helmet and like I, I don't know. It just it was mm-hmm. very it was very sad, you know, like just yeah, the, it was. the loneliness, you know, and all that. Like, I think, I think, like, it's sort of a universal thing that people can understand, but kind of portrayed in a more ex- extreme way than in real life. Like, mm-hmm. that's what stories do, I guess, is they, uh, yeah, 
they show us familiar stuff in an unfamiliar setting. Indeed. Yeah. Which brings me to probably the biggest star of the entire show that does not have a very specific actor, but good God almighty, that little guy took the internet by storm. <laughs> the minute he first appeared on screen, Baby Yoda. Baby Yoda. <laughs> oh my gosh. So. Was he a puppet? Yeah, he was a puppet. Oh my gosh. He was a puppet was all the way great. through. Okay, so I, what, they took, they, like, there was some sort of, like, the the puppeteer for the for, for, for Yoda, for old Yoda, there was this cool thing with, like, the ears and yeah. how expressive the ears yeah. were. Frank, Frank Oz, yeah. Yeah, Frank Oz. Um, well, he wasn't the puppeteer, but... Well, um, well, well, him and Jim Henson were the, were the ones that, like, were the ones who created, like, the original Yoda puppet. Right, yeah. And just the whole, like, how the ears were used for expressiveness and, like, they go up or they go down and mm-hmm. they're disappointed and stuff. And, I'm like, s- I, I... Sorry. You, I, 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 um, I, like, they did sort of, there was, like, similar stuff with uh, that puppet. I was like, oh, I can see, like, the they're putting the, like, even his ears have expression. Yeah. Everything, yeah. I'm so heckin' cute. Oh my gosh. I'm so <laughs> I'm so sad that the original Yoda puppet was lost. The ori- what? Where um, did it why? Where did so, it go? So so um if I remember my history correctly, um the original Yoda puppet was originally put into the Smithsonian. Mm-hmm. Um during the I forget which year like the Smithsonian caught fire. Oh. I believe the Yoda puppet was one of the uh, exhibits that was lost. Oh gosh. Which I'm incredibly sad about because I love that puppet. That it is a loss be, for be, us all. because because <laughs> because you can kind of tell in between. Um, I think it was in between episodes um, six to episode one from mm-hmm. in between that time frame. I think the episode one puppet looked vastly different. Yeah, I'm I thought that was certain. just because he was supposed to be younger, but that pot pot possibly, but that wouldn't really matter. It wasn't really that long considering um, the lifespan of yeah. Because like because like because Yoda, like, because <laughs> Yo, Yoda when we saw him um, die in episode six, he's nine hundred years old. Yeah, like a little over nine hundred years old mm-hmm. almost. He and like li- baby Yoda is fifty, and baby Yoda's fifty. <laughs> like they even Can mentioned. Can you imagine being a child for fifty years? <laughs> I I don't even I don't even I don't even want to picture that. Oh my god, that's crazy. Yeah. Oh my gosh. But but he like was so small. I know. When he was walking around on the ground. I was always so scared that someone was gonna like step on him in the cantina. <laughs> yeah, me me too. I'm like, oh my god, please don't step on him. Please like, don't step on him. Please don't step on him. Yeah. Like like. Yep. Never before, I think, in any Star Wars show, like, has such wholesomeness and preciousness been embodied in one character. Yep, in a puppet. It, it into a small, little little baby Yoda puppet. <laughs> <laughs> and that moment at the beginning of episode eight, when the stormtroopers, those two stormtroopers on the bikes are just sitting around and talking, and that one just, that. Pu- and that one just punches him. <laughs> like we don't, we don't, don't see you the dare a- touch that precious little boy. <laughs> like we don't see, we don't see him actually punching the puppet, but yeah. it, you, we know what took place. If and you th- harm a single hair in his ears, and, and, the, and then IG Eleven came out of nowhere. We're like, get, yeah. get him, get this, get, get these boys. <laughs> That was a really funny scene too. Actually, the stormtroopers just sitting there. It was like a day in the life, and they, it, 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 rem- it reminded me of the like re- taking pot shots at that piece of garbage, and neither of them could hit it. Yes, I, I'm. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, this is so be- This is so perfect. This is like red versus blue in Star Wars. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, it, it, it's it's a web series based on Halos. It, oh gosh. Like, yeah. like 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 there was a lot of moments where they'll have like two characters like just standing around talking, just mm-hmm. t- saying random stuff, and I'm like. This is a episode of Red vs. Blue. Yeah. <laughs> what is this? Oh, but yeah. Um, in conclusion, I really enjoyed this show. Me too. It was great. It had pretty much. It had pretty much everything I love. Uh, badassery, uh, culture, uh, cute creatures, <laughs> uh, lone wolf characters. Great, great acting. Great acting. Amazing set pieces. Mm-hmm. Be- beautiful cinematography. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, to to end this off. Yes. Any expectations about if it should be season two, or if it should be given its own like spinoff film? Oh gosh, you know. Or just any expectations in general for like what I you want to see the story or go? I don't think a film. I think. I think a um, 
I think a second a second series would be great because they left a lot of loose ends that we need to need to tie up. Yes, absolutely. Um, <clears throat> and I don't know. I don't know what my expectations are. I would love to figure out what. Now that you've told me where the dark saber comes from, I would love to figure out how the heck that son of a bitch got it. Yeah, I I, I want to know that too. Yeah, but yeah. Another big thing with me. Yeah. I hope once and for all through this show we finally figure out what the hell kind of race Yoda is. Yeah, what is we ne- he? We never... Like, no, it, it, there isn't anything? I... No, it, they're, they're classified to be similar to another race, but we don't know the actual name of the species. Okay. It has never been said... Um, I believe it has never been said in any of the uh, movies, um, shows, or novelizations of wow. anything Star Wars related that they have said mm-hmm. what race... Yoda is. Mm-hmm. So if, I want to see where they take this. Do you think? Because we um we saw her take out a bunch of other people, but do you think that the dark saber maybe belonged to the armorer? Would he? Was there any time you saw it more recently than I did? Was there any Ooh. time that Gus could have gone up against her and we didn't see it? Because that would be pretty cool. I don't know i don't i did not see him enter the tunnels because if any any if there's any like mandalorian and, character that i would think would have the dark saber it would be the armor po- possibly just but, just but, but we but we don't know if she's alive or dead though well i mean she survived when those other those that bunch of people attacked her slay but, yeah slay yeah. my queen oh it's so awesome oh but, my god yeah also i want to know well i mean i will i will miss his cute little face but I'm looking forward to seeing if, since he's a foundling, if Baby Yoda will have a little, a little helmet. A little <laughs> Mandalorian helmet. Oh my god. A little tiny thing. He could forge it out of, like, a tiny bit of one of those little silver bars. You have me speechless. I, uh, I ne- Never have I actually wanted to see this. It would need this. to have ear holes. <laughs> never have I wanted to see this, but oh my god. <laughs> I would love to see somebody actually draw this up. Oh, oh my, my gosh. Yeah. Well, no, yeah. You would just like, it'd just be like a little tiny, it would be like a chibi. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm actually blushing just thinking about oh, this. How be- did I never think about I wanted this? I w- I've been thinking about it since, <laughs> since I watched the show. I'm like, oh my oh, god. Oh, it's so perfect. No, 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 baby, you want a helmet. Oh my god. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! Oh my God! Yes, would recommend. Would highly, would highly recommend. Would. It is definitely, it is worth, um, Disney Plus just for the Mandalorian like mm-hmm. alone, and especially like all the other stuff that's like on Disney Plus. But like for mm-hmm. original content, like the Mandalorian is a really strong start. Oh, yeah, it's a very strong start. Like, yep. Okay, one one thing I do want to ask, like, because I know this was like a big thing. Yeah. And instead of like other streaming services, because they released that the, uh, for like Netflix when they mm-hmm. release a series, yeah, they release all the episodes at once. Mm-hmm. Disney Plus released it um, by week, how a normal television show works. Really? See, I didn't know that because I watched them all at once. <laughs> yeah, yeah, be- yeah. Because we saw we saw it like after all the episodes were released. Mm-hmm. But um, I I was told by like like people that have recommended it to me and they're like oh i can't wait for next week i'm like and i was like they don't release all the episodes right away and they're like no they do it by weekly and everything like that i'm like really that that that's bold in an era of Um, of instant access streaming well you know i think that would be kind of cool i think so too i miss i miss the um sometimes i miss the expectation of watching the next episode yeah and some and sometimes when like you have something to look forward to i'm like a i'm like a mega like binger of things Mm -hmm. like i literally watched all of the then 12 seasons of supernatural basically back to back to back to back (sighs) during a terrible summer when i didn't want to see anybody you go girl my god it's nothing to be proud of donald (laughs) i i I know but damn i'm 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 like i can i can barely force myself to binge watch an entire season of daredevil Uh uh-huh yeah so um so literally i I'm such a binger at these kind of things that I can't get anything done until I've watched the whole thing. So just having that would be cool to be like, okay, you can watch one episode and then you got to go and get some productive stuff done because you have no choice because it's not all here yet. Yeah, exactly. You know? And exactly. <laughs> and one thing like I'm like always like annoyed by with like the, some of the streaming stuff, like they release it all right away is that 
if you release it all right away and then people watch it all and everything like that and everything gets spoiled. Yep. Like I hate like I hate that people oh, do that. You can see a lot more and be way ahead of other people. Exact yeah. exactly because not everybody's going to sit down and like binge it all the time. Like yeah. like but like, like 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 you or like sometimes me depending on like mm-hmm. what show I'm watching. Yeah. But like I think releasing them in like episodic things mm-hmm. on streaming it honestly is going to be is going to be smarter for the long run. I think so too actually. It like, sort of it sort of builds the viewership community a little bit more. In both in both building the viewership, uh-huh. creating suspense and intrigue mm-hmm. for your show, but also as a biz, as a business strategy mm-hmm. in order to yeah. bring more people into Disney Plus, especially this early on. Yeah, cuz like binge watching shows is a very it's a very solitary thing mm-hmm. because I know when I watch TV shows with people and I just keep going and going and going, I start to think like are they burned out yet? Like, because I'm not. I could just sit there all day and watch, binge watch things. But, um, but if it's just one episode and it's just a cert- it like comes out at a certain time of the week, like you're more likely to get together with other people and watch it as right. opposed to, you know, going go, uh, like like living quietly and alone in your shame of how much you binge watch. You know. <laughs> Why must you characterize me like that? No, I was talking about myself, Donald. Oh. <laughs> well, we'll wallow in shame together. Yep, yep. Clink, clink. Clink, clink. My, my coffee's cold. Mine is gone. <laughs> you, are, you, you, drink, you drink it a lot faster than I do. I do, I do. But, yeah, that's pretty much it. So, yeah. in, in, in closing, guys, <laughs> The Mandalorian is probably one of the greatest, like, uh, like, contributions to Star Wars, like, in the past few years or so. I, I put it up there with some... Um, uh, Clone Wars and, like, how much it, like, contributes to the overall, like, lore of the entire Star Wars universe. Yeah, yeah. It's worth the watch. It is it is definitely worth the subscription to Disney+. Plus. It, mm-hmm. if, if you're looking for something other than look, looking back on, like, old Disney movies and everything like that, mm-hmm. definitely get Disney+. Plus. Mm-hmm. Definitely watch The Mandalorian. Mm-hmm. And always, always remember, we have spoken. <laughs> <laughs> Keep your geek on. I thought you were going to say keep your geek on. And then I no, was going to say no, I have spoken. No. We'll, we'll, Damn no. it, Donald. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll still do it, but we got to let them know where we are. Where, we we have, are. We where have, can we they have, find us? We have spoken. They can. So uh, thanks again, guys, for watching. The, for li- not listening. Listening. What? Ugh. If they're watching, I'm very creeped out. Yeah, indeed. Because we don't have a camera set up yet. <laughs> nope. But that um, one guy who hangs out outside the window all the time. How are you coming upstairs? It's freezing outside. Hello, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> but um, thank you guys for listening in on this episode of uh, the Channel Geekery Podcast. Listening to us geek out over the Mandalorian. Um, you can uh, check us out on uh, Spotify, Sound, uh, Spotify, and Spreaker at for General Geekery Podcast. You can also um, uh, check out the episodes on YouTube if you don't have either Speaker or um, uh, Spotify. Mm -hmm. You can check us out on uh, YouTube at Anime Rev Productions. I will post that into the uh, link of the episode. It is my my YouTube channel where I do um, a lot of uh, parody stuff and um, uh, playthroughs of games, everything like that. And Mm -hmm. uh, now posting episodes of the General Geekery podcast to be um, uh, viewed by a more, not non, well, more general Right. Ge- more general audience. General geekery general, for general audience. General audience. <laughs> um, so, um, uh, y- you can also check us out on social media on Facebook at General Geekery Podcast. You can also check us out um, at Gen Geek Podcast on Twitter, I believe, and yep. General Geekery on Instagram. Yep. Hannah, where can they check you out? Um, well, <clears throat> I I uh, can be found um, every Monday at seven thirty on Loaded Dice Adventures where um, myself and my party members all um, explore the world of Avenaria. It's tons of fun. There's lots of giveaways and um, just um, opportunities to sort of uh, interact with the players. Um, We have a pretty awesome uh, fan base. Uh, Yeah, Donald actually won some dice um, the other day. That is the sound. I want a bag of dice! I want a bag of dice. I, I want, want a bag, bag of dice. dice. <laughs> um, yeah, so you can find me on, on uh, twitch.tv slash loaded dice adventures. And you can also find me on Instagram at Pythian Legume. If you know what that's from. 
I'm still trying to figure it out. You get something. I'm, I'm sure still trying nobody to figure it out. has ever been able to guess what Pythian legume is. I'm, I'm still trying to figure it out. Well, we're going to talk about, about, about its source material at some point. Okay. Right? I'll, once I figure it out, we will. Okay. And you and you guys can check me out on social media at uh, on Twitter, Instagram, and on Twitch at Ryuzaki MK7. Of course, we'll put all that into the uh, uh, description below. You can also check Hannah out on the um, uh, Splanchis? Splanknicks. Splanknicks. Okay, Splanknicks. I'm still trying to figure out how to pronounce that. Um, the Splanknicks uh, podcast that uh, her and her mother um, uh, do. They, you can also find them on Spotify as well. I'll mm-hmm. put the link for that into the episode as well. Yep. So thanks again, guys, for listening in. This has been episode 11 of the General Geekery Podcast. For uh, for Hannah, I'm, I'm Donald. We are the General Geekery crew. And always remember, we can bring you in warm or we can bring you in cold. But always remember to keep your geek on. We have spoken. Clink, clink. Bye, guys. <laughs>